Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I'll be doing my first impressions of Byredo makeup. So I have these two beauties here, the eyeshadow palette in corporate colors, and then one of their matte lipsticks in the shade Worship Her. So if you're interested in seeing some swatches of these products, how I got this look today, and also here are my first impressions and review of this line of makeup, then just stick around. So before we go into the swatches, I just want to take a moment and appreciate the gorgeousness of this packaging. So this is the eyeshadow palette in the shade Color Story Corporate Colors. So yes, this is a pretty boring, straightforward color story. If you want something much more colorful, they do have other options on their website. But I figured this was probably the set of colors I would use the most and the other color stories just didn't really appeal to me. But you can see that it has this really, really unique natural looking shape and this cute mirror over here. And of course, the gold is just so gorgeous and reflective. And it just looks like some sort of oyster shell or something. And now on the back, it's just plain black, but it does list the shade names over here. And they are inspired by office supplies. So you've got your letterhead, eraser, pushpin, manila, and stilo. So yes, not the most creative naming, but come on, this packaging. So, so, so pretty. I usually don't try out a ton of new luxury makeup brands since they are so expensive. I usually stick with the tried and true, like Pat McGrath, Natasha Denona, Charlotte Tilbury, so on and so forth. But the moment I saw a picture of this palette, I knew that I just had to pick it up. So next up, we have their matte lipstick, and this is in the shade Worship Her. Ooh, look, it has the little Byredo B embossed in there. And this is such a gorgeous, fairly heavy lipstick. And I remember when I first saw this, I was really curious how they made this work with the lipstick tube, but I think the tube itself is actually just straight inside here. And as you can see, the packaging is just substantially larger than it, but it does have such a beautiful weight to it. So this really feels very heavy and luxurious. And I love how this design is so, so simple and yet effective. It looks so chic and so luxurious, even though all they did was just give this bottle a little bit of curve and also have this bicolor effect. So super, super excited about this. And I wanted to just quickly share what the outside packaging looked like when I got this. So these came in these really gorgeous, sophisticated white boxes that have the little B on the top and you just slide the product out over here. And then the products themselves came in these little bags. So I think those are some nice touches as well that further add to the luxury experience as you're unboxing this product. So without further ado, let's get into these swatches. So first off, I'm gonna swatch this eyeshadow palette. So this first shade is called Letterhead, and this is described as a pearly, luminous, light ivory. Ooh, it's pretty. Okay, so actually in pan, I see a little bit more of a yellowishness to it. You might not see that in the camera, but in person, it definitely has a little bit more yellow. But then swatched, I think you primarily see the shine, which is much more of a pale champagne. So I think this will be a perfect shade for inner corner and brow bone highlight. Next up, we have Eraser, which is a pearly, fresh, rosy beige. Interesting. Ooh, that's a really pretty shade. Huh, that's actually quite unique. I was expecting Eraser to look more pink in the pan, but actually in pan, as you can probably tell, it almost looks a bit more taupe and silver rather than pink. But then swatched, you can definitely see that there is a rosy pink base to this and then more of a taupey shimmer. Very, very pretty. And then next up, we have Push Pin, which is a warm matte red clay. That is very pretty feel bad about reaching into that shade because it does have the B for Byredo, but luckily that embossment is a little bit deep. That is a really pretty kind of mid-toned red matte shade. And I think the undertones of this actually are quite complementary with eraser. So I'm happy to see that since I was wondering if the red might be a little bit much for an everyday corporate look, but 
hey, if it has the same undertones. Next, we have Manila, which is described as a shimmery dark khaki. Ooh, interesting. So I find this to be a very unique, probably the most unique shade in the palette because otherwise this palette is very much just your standard set of pretty neutral everyday shades. But this almost is giving me slight <laughs> Christmas tree effects, so it definitely is a very dark green in its undertone. So even though I think the shimmer is maybe a little bit more of that golden khaki, the actual base pigment is pretty deep. So I'm kind of surprised that they have this in here and with such a boring shade name like Manila. Like this does not make me think of Manila at all, but I'm digging it. I'm glad that there is something in here to add a little bit more interest to the look. And then finally, we have Stilo, which is described as a shimmery dark brown. Oh, interesting. So this one is definitely more of a satin finish. It takes a little bit more building up in the swatch, which hopefully means it's pretty easy to apply sheer layers of in case you're a little bit concerned about patchiness. So you can definitely, if you look closely, see that there is a slight shimmery satin finish, but I would definitely say overall, this is not that reflective. In general, upon this initial swatch, I would say eraser looks the shiniest. And then letterhead is quite shimmery, but in a bit more of a pearlescent way and also doesn't have much base pigment. But Manila is very, very shimmery. So even though these both are described as shimmery shades, it's a very different formula. So with the eyeshadow swatches out of the way, I'm also going to swatch this lipstick, which is called Worship Her. And this is a warm matte brown. So let's just swipe this over here. Uh, I always hate the first swipe because it ruins the top, but there we go. Ooh, I think that's a really gorgeous shade and will pair very nicely with this color story on the lids. So I actually usually do not get matte lipsticks because I hate the feeling of dryness on my lips. I am a lip gloss fiend. But from some of the reviews I've seen of this lipstick, it seems like it's not supposed to be that drying. And also to be completely honest, I picked this one because I knew I had to get one of the lipsticks because it's so, so gorgeous. But I didn't want to get any of the satin finish ones because none of those colors spoke to me. This color was definitely much more my jam. So let's hope that this formula is actually comfortable on the lips. The color though is definitely very gorgeous. I would say that there's a decent amount amount of red and rose as part of this matte brown, so it definitely doesn't have that orangey warmth to it. It's a lot more red and rose leaning. Ooh, and you can apparently change the shape of this by just putting the cap on in different angles. So you can see here I've made it a little bit more of an S shape, whereas if you do it this direction you have that curve that is the default. So I went ahead and completed the left eye with all of the shades featured in this look. So now I'll show you guys on the right eye how I got this look. So first off, I have my Wayne Goss number 16 brush and I'm going to go into this push pin warm red matte shade. And I would say that this picks up more easily than you might think. So I did run into a little bit of patchiness on the other eye just because I picked up a little bit too much to start out with. So I would definitely recommend going in with a light hand to this shade and slowly building up the pigment. It is a really gorgeous mid-tone shade though, so I don't think you'll have many problems as long as you work very slowly with it. And then next to build up some depth, I went into this Manila shade over here. And I'm using a Wayne Goss number no. four brush, just using this to build up some intensity on the outer corner. And this is a very interesting shade because as I mentioned in the swatches, it is very reflective. So it's more so the texture of something you would expect for an all over the lid shade, but it is a pretty deep shade and this is corporate colors. So it is a little bit intense for a corporate look. Next, I'm going to go into Stilo over here. And I found on the other eye, this shade does take a little bit of building up. So on the plus side, if you are worried about having too much of the dark shade build up, I think you can very slowly use this to add more smoke, but it does take a little bit of playing around with. Next with my GSN 9 brush, I'm going into this eraser shade here. 
And this was probably my favorite shade to apply. It goes on super easily, even with a brush, which is impressive for a shade that has this degree of reflectivity. And it's also just really pretty. I could definitely see myself wearing this shade quite often. Next with my Sonia G Mini Booster, I'm just picking up some of Letterhead and putting that on the inner corner and also on the brow bone and just blending that out there. And then for the lower lash line, I'm first going in with my ESIM G27 into push pin and putting that all over the lower lash line, especially in the outer part, just to make sure some of that smoky redness is present in the lower lash line. And then going into Stilo, I'm gonna put this on the outer corner. And you can probably see there, it does take a little bit of layering in order to get a lot of pigmentation out of this shade. But again, good for if you're doing more of a corporate friendly look. Next step, going into Manila, I'm going to drag that along the center part of the lower lash line. And then finally, going in again with eraser, I'm just going to put that on the inner third. And then to finish off the look, I'm going back into my Wayne Goss number 16 and going into that reddish shade again. I'm just going to add a little bit more red to the crease area and also just make sure all of the shades are nicely blended out. So there are all the eyeshadows on my lids. So now I'm gonna go in with some eyeliner, some blush and bronzer, and then I'll be right back so we can dive into the lipstick. So here's the rest of the face done. I went ahead with my M Cosmetics brush liner and then my Gucci bronzer in shade two and my Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Chic in Pillow Talk Intense. And I wanted more of a matte cheek effect. So I mostly concentrated on the outer ring. So now we can go in with the lipstick. Again, this is called a warm brown matte and the shade is called Worship Her. Yes, if you want boss lady vibes, this is apparently the lipstick to go with. So I'm super excited to try this on and see how this looks with the rest of this look. Mm, this has a really interesting scent to it. It's kind of sweet and reminds me a little bit of fruit, but it's a very rich and almost caramel scent. Very luxurious scented product. There we go, so that's the lips done. I'm sad to report that the little bee on top of the lipstick is unfortunately faded away now, but it had to happen at some point. So with the lipstick on, you can definitely taste a little bit of the perfumey smell that I was mentioning. And it's a nice taste and smell. It's not like the standard sort of sweet smells that you get with lip products. I think because Byredo is a luxury fragrance brand, they did come up with something a bit more unique. So you definitely have a more sophisticated smell to it. Like I said, it's a little bit sweet, a little bit caramel, a little bit berry. So I'm having a hard time quite pinpointing it, but it's overall quite a pleasant sensory experience. The lipstick shade itself is something I really, really love. So so I've been on the hunt for a nice warm brown shade and I think this might be it because I've wanted a shade that is kind of nude and neutral and can go with a lot of looks but is maybe still on the deeper side and not just you know a my lips but better situation. So this definitely gives you some vampy vibes but not in a sort of dark purple berry way more in a brown neutral way. The formula itself in terms of how it feels it doesn't feel drying yet, but I can tell that it's not a formula that's gonna be very nourishing. And that's fine, I mean, it's a matte lipstick. So I'll have to report back to you guys in terms of how it fares and wears over the day. But for now, it feels pretty good. And the only other thing I'll mention about the formula that I noticed is it is somewhat sheer when you first put it on. So especially if you get a deeper shade like this, you might want to build it up a few layers just to make sure you have full opacity. I think this was maybe three swipes across and I still see some areas where it looks like maybe there's a little bit of my natural lip color peeking through. Let me actually address that by putting on some more. Okay, there we go. 
So with the look done, let's go in now to my overall first impressions and initial review of these products. So first off, again, I will emphasize how gorgeous this packaging is. I know it looks beautiful in pictures, but it honestly looks so much more gorgeous in person. So that alone for me has made this really, really worthwhile. Even if the formula was terrible, I think I would have still decided to keep these products. That said, fortunately for me, I've really enjoyed my first experience working with these products. I would definitely say that these probably aren't my favorite formulas in the world. So like say the eyeshadow is not going to compete with my Pat McGrath eyeshadows and the lipstick's not going to compete with my Pat McGrath or my um, Lisa Eldridge formulas. But these are really exceptional formulas combined with the overall luxury experience that they provide. So first off with the eyeshadow palette, I love how this is a palette that you could use for a pretty basic office look. For example, if you stuck with letterhead and maybe a tiny bit of stilo for smoke and then possibly either push pin or eraser just to add a little bit of color to the look, I think you could achieve a pretty everyday corporate look. That said, there is enough spice to this palette such that it's not like say Star Aura, which I tried recently, which is truly, truly a natural everyday palette. As you can tell from today's look, it is definitely pretty glam. So this can definitely transition you day to night if you say, you know, use a lot more of push pin to really make sure that red is prominent. And especially if you incorporate Manila, Manila is kind of the dark horse of this palette. You don't really expect it. And when you look in the palette, especially I think in pictures, it doesn't really stand out because you can't really tell the texture until you see it in person. But as you can make Maybe see a little bit better in the swatches. Manila actually has a lot of shine to it and it also is just a very unique shade because you have that dark smoke but also that kind of forest evergreen kind of tone to it as well. So honestly this is actually a very beautiful holiday palette as well because again you have your kind of like Christmas tree colors, your red colors, and then your more shimmery shades as well. So I think this is a relatively versatile palette that can get Get you from everyday looks to more everyday glam looks. And I think also if you did a look that was more based around these deeper shades, you could get something that is full blown smoky eye glam. So overall, I am quite pleased with this palette and the formulas generally worked quite well. I had a tiny bit of patchiness issues with this matte shade, but fortunately it's not that deep, so that was fine. This shade over here, Stilo, did take a little bit of building up, but again, I think if you are trying to go for more of a corporate everyday look, the fact that this is a little bit more sheer and needs to be built up is maybe a plus. And then this shade again was a surprise favorite for me and I think it's just so gorgeous on the lid. It has really a high shine for an eyeshadow that's supposed to be part of a corporate colors look. In general, I find the branding of this a little bit funny. I don't know if it's supposed to be tongue in cheek or something because, you know, calling these things like letterhead, manila, push pin, it's like, are we working in a 1980s law firm or something? Like who is using those as their primary? corporate tools or whatever. So I find the color names not super inspirational, but you know, maybe this is meant in a tongue-in-cheek way and this palette is actually a lot more interesting than the color names would suggest. Next up, the lipstick. So I will confess, I do think that this is a lipstick that I will be principally keeping because of the packaging rather than the lipstick itself. I mean, the lipstick itself is very nice. I really enjoy the scent of this. I get faint whiffs of it now that it's on my lips and it does just add a certain air of sophistication. The sensorial experience kind of reminds me a little bit of my Gucci bronzer, where you don't really smell it until you put it on, but then you do get these just faint whiffs, which I personally find quite pleasant. The shade is definitely something I'm quite fond of. I will say though, because it is quite a deep shade, it did take a little bit of buildup to get opacity. And that's in contrast to say my Pat McGrath formulas, which are opaque in one swipe. I also do feel like 
it is a tad bit drying on my lips now that I've had it on a little bit longer. Definitely not like super drying as far as matte lipsticks go. As you can maybe see, it doesn't actually look super, super matte on the lips. It has a little bit more of a satin finish. That's fine, but for me personally, if I'm gonna have a drying lipstick, it better be totally matte. And if I'm gonna have a satin lipstick, it better have a little bit moisture to it. The packaging though is definitely, definitely a winner. I mean, even just having this on your vanity and using it occasionally, I think is a nice experience if you're as into makeup and packaging as I am. So overall, I am quite pleased with this initial experience I've had with Byredo makeup. I am super curious to see what they'll come out with next. I really hope that they come out with more eyeshadow palettes in this really, really gorgeous packaging, or maybe some cheek products as well. Like I know they have their multi-sticks that you can use for eyeshadow cheeks and lips, but personally, I'm not a huge fan of multitasking cream products. I much prefer powder products by and large. So I hope they come out with some powder blushes or bronzers or highlights, because I think that would be really great. And given how beautiful this initial packaging was, I'll definitely be keeping my eye on their future releases. So that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed my first impressions of Byredo makeup. And if you've tried this brand before, please let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts were. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I am a new YouTuber and this is a new channel, so I would greatly appreciate the support. So thank you guys so much for joining me today and I'll catch you next time. Bye.